All right, my friends, let's try to find the center of mass of this uh, semicircular plate. Um, so the, um, the plate is of total mass M um, in radius R. And so we're gonna try to locate where the center of mass is. Well, clearly from left to right, the, the center of mass is gonna be somewhere along this line. So we really just need to find like the Y coordinate of the center of mass, the vertical coordinate. Um, and so your Y coordinate of a center of mass is what you do if you had a bunch of discrete objects is you would take, um, you would take each object's Y coordinate and multiply by how much mass was there and then divide by the total mass. Um, but since this is not a, a set of discrete point masses, this is a continuous, uh, a continuous distribution of mass, these sums will um, become infinite sums or integrals. And so what we need to do is carve this up into a whole bunch of little chunks of mass called dm um, and multiply each little mass by its y-coordinate. So it's like a weighted average of the, of the y-coordinates. And of course the bottom is just the, the, total, uh, the total mass. Instead of summing up individual objects, m, uh, each little mass m sub i, we're summing uh, infinitesimal masses dm. And so, well, the way that we're going to choose to carve this thing up is we'll use little um, uh, primitive, like, uh, area elements and, like, polar coordinates. And so what we're going to do is this little chunk here, um, this, little, this little guy has mass dm. And the hardest part of this is coming up with how to express this. Um, this guy is mass per area um, times area. And so what's going to happen here is if we, if we play around with this a little bit more, the mass per area of this plate is, well, the mass is m, and the area is half of the area of a circle, so it's half of pi r squared. Um, so we need to divide by pi r squared over 2, which would actually bring the 2 up here. So this part, um, this is your mass per area, and then we need to multiply by the area dA. So a little patch of area. Well, what's the area of this thing? Well, this little chunk here, that's a little excursion in radius. We'll call it dR. And then this little chunk, whether you view it here or here, that's a little excursion in arc length. Um, that would be r d theta. Um, so r itself is your coordinate that lets you know how far out you are. And then if you sweep that over at itty bitty angle d theta, this little bit of arc length would be r d theta. So if you multiply d r and r d theta, that would be the area of this patch. So this little patch, this little area d a, is going to be well, the product of these two things. So it'll be like little r dr d theta. Right? So that, this is our little chunk of mass. Um, so that's going to go in for dm. Now our little bit of um, our y coordinate here, that's how far up this chunk of mass is. So this distance here. And what that guy is going to be is if this is r, and this angle is theta, then this y coordinate is going to be like r sine theta. Um, so your y coordinate is going to be r sine theta. And so then, given now that we have an expression for the um, the size of each, the mass of each little chunk, and we have an expression for the y coordinate of each little chunk, um, we can put that in here. So the y coordinate we'll put in here and the dm we'll put in there. Um, so let's go for it. And so our, um, what we need to do then is we'll have the integral of, we have uh, y times dm. Well, our y coordinate is r sine theta. Our dm is 2m over pi r squared, little r d, little r d theta. Now you realize we're wiggling two variables there, so this is gonna become a double integral. 
we're going to integrate from um, little r equals zero all the way out to the full radius of the thing. And we're going to integrate from theta equals zero to, what are we doing? We're going to sweep from here. We're going to go all the way over to pi. So radius, the radial coordinate goes from zero to all the way out. The theta coordinate goes from zero to pi or 180 degrees. Um, the denominator is just the sum of the little bits of mass. So yeah, you could sit there and write things down, but, but really if you just know what this means in English, this is the sum of the bits of mass, so that's just going to be the total mass m, um, which you'll see will cancel that m out um, from up above. So then we don't need to worry about it. And so here we are with the, uh, the integral over um, radius and over theta. So first little move, let's just clear constants out of here. So our constants, it looks like we have 2 over pi big R squared. So let's just pull that out. 2 over pi big R squared. Um, and then we have our quantities that we're integrating over. So we have theta is 0 to pi. We have r equals 0 to big R. And we're integrating um, r squared sine theta dr d theta. If you handle the integral over r first over the radial coordinate, which is just this part, um, that's just going to raise this to r cubed over 3, which would then just become a constant that would pull out in front. Um, and then you're just going to be left with the integral over theta. So again, your integral over the radial coordinate r from 0 to big R, this is just going to become little r cubed over 3, and then you'll plug in big R and 0, which would just give you big R cubed over 3. And so just to slow that down then, we have our constant of 2 over pi R squared. We just learned from the radial inter integral that we're going to get big R cubed over 3, um, and then times in fact, all we have left then is this integral over sine theta d theta from 0 to pi. 0 to pi of sine theta d theta. Well, the uh, integral of sine or the antiderivative of the sine function um, is negative cosine. And so we're going to get negative cosine evaluated at pi minus negative cosine evaluated at zero, um, which is just going to give us a factor of two. Um, and so if I finish this up, we've got two over uh, pi r squared times r cubed over three. I guess I could have simplified some of that. And then times this integral from zero to pi over sine theta d theta, that's just going to give you a two. You'll get a uh, one minus a negative one, which will just give you a two. Um, and so then ultimately what you then get is finally when, up, when all the smoke clears, up top you're going to get a 4 from 2 times 2. Um, you are going to get an r up top, which it should go like some fraction of the radius. And in the bottom you're going to get a 3 pi. So 4r over 3 pi. That is the y coordinate of the center of mass. And so if you just look up what like a decimal of that is. If you divide um, 4 by 3 pi, so pi being pretty close to 3, so you're like 4 ninths of the, roughly speaking, 4 ninths of the way out. Um, so it's not quite halfway out. So like if this is r over 2, would be here. Um, if that's r over 2, your center of mass is going to be like a little shy of that. It's going to be down here. Um, at less than that. So your center of mass is going to be at, again at 4 over 3 pi times r. Um, so it's not quite um, out halfway um, to find the y coordinate of the center of mass of this um, uniform half disk.